Okay, we'll come to the first lesson of uh, Physics or Technology 1, Motion of Objects. Uh, motion has two uh, categories or divisions. Kinematics describe motion, uh, av while dynamics is the other branch of motion, which investigates the causes of motion, which answers the why. Whereas kinematics just tries, uh, tries to discuss how motion happens or predict the next um, event in motion. So under kinematics, we will um, study concepts like position, velocity, and acceleration, and this will lead to the kinematics equations of motion under constant acceleration. So we um, study a special case where acceleration is constant. This uh, constant acceleration motion has, you can divide this up to another four uh, types of motion. One is translational motion, motion that happens in a linear way. Um, circular motion, motion that goes around a circle. And rotational motion where uh, the motion is around uh, an axis. And also you have the projectile motion, which is uh, the motion of a missile or a, um, or a basketball or something that's in X and Y uh, and uh, not only in X. So you can also say it's a two-dimensional motion. Under dynamics, we will uh, study Newton's laws and conservation principles. So under Newton's laws, uh, we study the first law, the law of inertia. Then we will study F equals MA, the second law, and the third law. Conservation principles, you will have uh, the work energy theorem, and uh, we will introduce to the momentum, as well as conservation of momentum, then conservation of energy. Um, between uh, momentum and the second law there's a connection which we will investigate and also acceleration that we used in kinematics is actually we discussed the origination of acceleration from Newton's laws. Um, as a result of uh, rotational dynamics you, you have rotational dynamics also uh, that, that, that comes from Newton's laws and which can be explained from Newton's laws and on the rotational dynamics we will look at moment of inertia, torque, and angular momentum. Then we will also have conservation of angular momentum, and that's another conservation principle. So this is basically what we want to cover in this course. Uh, so let's start with kinematics. So uh, one of the things that is important for kinematics is the particle models and graphs. These are now used for representing motion. So these are visual aids that you will use to represent motion. Okay, so if you take a camera and uh, a movie camera and take photographs at a fixed rate. So a movie camera takes photographs, uh, let's say, it takes about 30 photographs per sec every second. And uh, the eye detects, eye can detect separate uh, photographs which if, if it was less than about uh, 16 photographs per second then we will see individual photographs but if it is more than that then we won't see individual photographs we will see a movie and it's uh, sort of an illusion so a movie is a series of photographs taken very rapidly and so each separate photograph you can call a frame and uh, in this particular example you see a car moving horizontally and uh, four frames of the car moving horizontally and we call this a film strip. So you have a strip of photographs uh, vertically aligned uh, that has been taken at consecutive time intervals. Now if you cut the individual frames and stack them on top of each other then you get uh, what we call a composite photo which is a photo of uh, the object's motion and this uh, or the shows the change in objects, objects position at several equally spaced instants of time. 
uh, the same amount of time elapses between each image and therefore uh, you see the progression of the object and this is called a motion diagram. Now these are some examples of motion diagrams and if the position of an object does not change every photo you take the uh, object will be at the same position so if it is a ball in the, like in this example it will stay at the same place and if you stack all the photos on top of one another you will just have just one image uh, of a ball uh, but if you have this uh, skateboard uh, rolling down the sidewalk a person on a skateboard rolling down a sidewalk at a constant speed then you have equally spaced um, images Whereas if you have a sprinter or someone running the 100 meter dash, uh, so they will speed up as they run and therefore if you stack these images up, you will see uh, the first two first images are closer together while as the runner increases in speed, uh, the distance also increases. As the opposite is true with an object that is slowing down, so if a car is stopping for a red light, you will see the distance between the first few images are larger while when the car is slowing down the distance between the objects or the car is less. Okay, so these are some real examples of the particle model. So the first image is a motion diagram of Mars as it uh, goes, uh, as you can see it uh, progress around the night sky as we rotate you can see the movement of mass. Uh, so if we, uh, we can assume that the mass of these objects are concentrated into a single point and because we don't care much about the shape of the objects and in, in, the, in the kinematics part of this and uh, so we say that mass is a single point in space uh, and we call that a particle. So any object we can represent by a dot uh, and particle will have no size, no shape, there is no top, bottom, front or back, so um, we just have a dot. And uh, so if you represent the motion of a falling ball or a feather uh, using the particle model, we, if you superimpose or put the particle model on top of the, um, if you put the particle model on top of the actual image, you will see something like this. So at the center of the ball you have the dot and the dot goes down as well as the same in this feather, feather you have the center of the feather where we assume the mass is concentrated and then you have the feather falling down and uh, at each of these uh, equal time space instances where you take the photo and you put a dot on each of these instances and this is how you reproduce the particle model another way of thinking of this is uh, let's say you have some a sheet of paper and as as the particle goes at equal time spaced uh, time time intervals that are equally spaced the particle has a, a ink dispenser which uh, dispense dispenses a drop of ink and the ink falls on the uh, paper when that happens you have a blot on the paper and so that will be the particle model so if you you can try this at home and see whether you can reproduce a particle model for a certain motion okay so is there a better way to represent the change of position over time and the answer is yes there is and there's a very methodical way of doing it and that is through what we call graphs so graphs have what we call axes um, and and the first image shows you the x-axis and in the x-axis you can uh, let's say you can plot uh, distance me in meters and as time progresses you can uh, also convert the particle model into a spaced uh, dots in x so um, so you can use uh, a two axes let's say x versus time we say so in the x is in the y and you have uh, the position you have in the y while you have the time in your x-axis and for each time instant you plot uh, your position and then you have a graph which will um, give you the position versus time for that particular motion. 
um, and this is uh, this will be investigated further in your uh, practical classes when you when you do for each of these practicals you will be drawing graphs and you will get a, a good feel for what graphs are with the practical classes okay so another concept that I'm going to introduce is what's called vectors so vectors are so if, if you want to specify a position how can you specify any position how would you tell directions to your home so when you start to say directions to your home uh, you will say okay you have to have a starting point and then you'll ask okay where are you coming from so if you're coming from there then you can tell directions okay you have to go 10 kilometers uh, towards uh, let's say you're coming from Dalukama to Pialyakoda and uh, you want to say okay you, you have to take the candy road and you go uh, this many kilometers towards Colombo starting from Dalukama so you see you're starting from a single point and then you're telling directions from that point onwards the same system is applied when planes are flying from one city to another but that, it's a complicated a little bit complicated because you don't have any landmarks in the air yeah. so you have to say okay take uh, a certain direction and fly uh, for a certain amount of distance and this there's a way of uh, keeping ground distance as well as uh, uh, flight distances and they can calculate this and find their way and this is how planes fly from you know, around the world and uh, one of the things that they use to do this is vectors so what are vectors so if you have this coordinate system then you have a point of reference we call the origin and uh, you a line passing through that origin we call a coordinate axis so any of the axes that you draw the single lines and you, it's so standard you draw a line and you say put a zero in there and that's an axis and we say that's x if it is horizontal and it's if it is vertical it's y and that's the standard convention um, the direction of so in the axis you have increasing numbers uh, it's called the positive direction so from uh, 0 0 to 1 0 to 1 2 3 and whatever you have positive coordinate values and to the back you have negative coordinate values so negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 that would be your negative direction so from the coordinate system you have a positive and a negative direction okay so if you want to specify a position with respect to the origin so we want to say okay go uh, 1.5 meters in uh, the negative direction from the origin and that you can do very easily by drawing a an arrow on the negative direction uh, let, let me correct this so because you're seeing this let me flip this image all right now it's moving so when I point it points in the same direction now so you start from the origin go 1.5 to the negative direction so to go to the negative direction your arrow should point to the negative direction and you draw an arrow that is 1.5 1.5 uh, in length magnitude and that points in the negative direction and that's a very clear way of saying uh, which direction you need to go and this is actually what we call a vector you have the direction specified as well as the magnitude specified and these quantities uh, that require you to specify a direction and a magnitude are called vectors all right so uh, vectors will have uh, magnitude and direction some of the vectors that you will come across in kinematics will be position displacement velocity and acceleration i will explain to you as uh, we come across these quantities and in dynamics you will come through uh, force and acceleration uh, force is a big concept that we will investigate when we come to dynamics now as i said uh, you have uh, in the first image here it's specified you have a head and a tail for each vector and the length of the vector gives you the magnitude the length of the arrow gives you the magnitude now if you look at a coordinate system and you want to specify a, a certain position you have to draw the length and then you have to say okay with respect to a certain axis what is the angle that that particular line or the arrow makes and that sort of specifies the direction so you give the angle and the length 
all but you can do is give the x and y coordinate in an x y coordinate system you specify the x uh, axis and then the y and when that happens uh, you say you, you have a good idea on the x and the y so if you give positive values for x and y you know it's in the positive quadrant or it's the first quadrant of this particular graph so it's positive x and positive y and therefore you can draw the vector and uh, specify the direction now certain vectors can have the same magnitude but different direction and although they have the same magnitude doesn't mean the vectors are the same if the direction is different although they have the same magnitude the vectors are different so in the case in the example one you have two different vectors because they're pointing in the same direction but you have two different magnitudes therefore the vectors are not equal then in the second example you have two vectors almost like the same magnitude but uh, they are pointing in different directions therefore also vector a and b uh, are not the same they are different but in example 3 both vector a and b are the same magnitude and also they are pointing in the same direction and therefore uh, this is uh, these vectors are equal Okay, we are going to look at average and instantaneous quantities and what those are and what those words mean basically okay um, so uh, a lot of kinematics t studies uh, the change of quantities okay it doesn't matter that we know the position what we are interested in is how does the position of an object change or if it changes at all if it does not change the object is not moving that's the first case we saw where the ball stays at the same place you take photos of this and the ball is at the same place and all the all the photos that you took will give you a ball that is not moving uh, but if the ball is moving then we have to say okay it has a certain change in position and the way we define change or represent change uh, in terms of algebra or for later use in calculus is the Greek letter delta. So you use the Greek letter delta which is a triangle and you put it in front of the variable that you use to specify uh, that particular variable. So let's say you're measuring a, a quantity Q and Q can be anything and you want to specify the change of the quantity q and then you say delta q so the change in q delta means change and therefore change in q so for position if you put x and you put delta x that does mean position uh, the change in position all right so as a specific word for change in position and how you measure change in position it's so change in position since position is now we've defined it as a vector because position in a coordinate system can mean positive negative whatever and if you specify this particular angle you can tell to which direction this is pointing or if you specify the x and y coordinate so displacement is uh, the word that we use to define change in position recall change in position is actually displacement now displacement is a difference in the two position vectors the final position vector minus the initial position vector and when you do this you end up with a, another vector which is a vector that is pointing from the starting position of the particle to the ending position of the particle and here are two examples where the distance is the same so the travel distance is the same uh, a runner goes up the hill in a sort of a spiral way or he goes on the ground anyway he goes 26.2 miles but that doesn't mean that he ha has the same displacement because the displacement has a direction now as well as a magnitude here however the distance is not the magnitude of the vector but the actual distance they travel and so the distance means this particular distance uh, in this case so this particular distance that is highlighted by uh, the red line or the darker line or this particular distance where, where the runner is going around and around the hill all right so average velocity is the total change in position you take the total change in position so final position vector minus the initial position vector, that's total change in position divided by the time it took to change the position so there's a time interval so you first measure 
at a certain time and secondly you measure at a, a later time so when you do this you have a time difference so delta x which is change in position over delta t which is change in time will give you what we call average velocity so since we are taking only two quantities of position which is the final and the initial you have no idea what is happening in between these two quantities so you have either you can have multiple positions between x2 and x1 uh, but we don't care we only uh, we are only interested in the final position and the initial position or the beginning position and then when you do this you end up with what we call average velocity <coughs> okay um, when a certain object is moving uh, with the same velocity so the velocity is constant velocity is not changing it's moving with the same velocity so it has the same change in position uh, over uh, the same time interval so if you have that then you what we what we say is that particular motion we define that particular motion as uniform motion that motion has the same exact velocity at each time instant so at all times if you measure the velocity that velocity is going to be the average velocity so the average velocity if you, if the velocity is the same the average velocity is going to uh, it be the velocity that it travel with so you can have any time interval and any position any difference in position and that's going to equal um, to the same average velocity so delta x a b that's change in position over delta uh, t a b is going to be the same as delta a c which is the total uh, position change between a and c and delta t a c so uh, if you do you did your um, activities uh, you would have understood this more if you did not go back to the activities and the reading and the book and try to understand this all right so non-uniform motion is when you have difference in velocity so as you can see the slope of this particular graph is changing and the slope is given is giving the velocity so if the slope is changing then you have a not what we call a non-uniform motion so you don't have the same velocity the same the velocity changes from time to time and this is no more a uniform motion it's a non-uniform motion so in this case the velocity between a and b is greater than the velocity between c and d and you can probably tell this by looking at the graph uh, because the slope has decreased between c and d with respect to a and b all right so if you have gone in a car there's a speedometer and every time you look at it you can find uh, the velocity or the, or the speed of the car we call it the speed of the car not the velocity so the speed of the car you can find it instantly like instant we call it instant noodles it's very instant so if you want the velocity right now you want it right now you look at the speedometer and then you have velocity now this type of velocity is called average velocity it's called it's not average velocity it's called instantaneous speed so this type of speed of course uh, in a car when you look at the speedometer you get speed not velocity and so this type of speed is called instantaneous speed and then you can say uh, right now speed or speed at any instant so any ins at, a, at a given instant of time if you want to find the speed you look at a speedometer and uh, the average speed is again total distance covered so total the final uh, position minus not the position but the five the total distance traveled it can be uh, in the in the earlier case this total distance covered is 26.2 miles so the runner goes from here to here to here to here to here he goes on this spiral and come up here and he has covered 26.2 miles whereas the magnitude between difference of position might be far less now similarly if you know uh, the total distance covered over the time interval that it took to cover that distance then you can find average speed okay here's the th thing to think about if you are caught by the police for speeding which does the police officer write on your ticket 
whether it's, uh, it's, it's instantaneous speed or average speed. What is he looking at when he when he when he says you were speeding and he try and he tries to write your ticket? So think about that. All right. So instantaneous velocity again is velocity right now. So earlier we said speed. So speed and velocity it has a different speed does not have any direction whereas velocity is now change in position and therefore it has a direction so instantaneous velocity is velocity at a specific instant and this may or may not be the average velocity at any instant it can have the average velocity or the velocity that is greater than average velocity or less than average velocity so if it is a uniform motion of course then it is traveling at the same velocity so therefore the instantaneous velocity is the average velocity but if it is not a uniform motion then you have a different velocity it might have a different velocity than your average velocity for the instantaneous velocity of a given time all right so that is all what we covered in the first lecture so in the first activities so make sure that you go through all of these concepts get uh, familiar with uh, the words and how to read graphs of, of position versus time and what the what the slope of the graph means for this um, position versus time graph and next time we will go through the kinematic equations and finish uh, the basic introduction to kinematics All right thank you if you have any questions please feel free to uh, ask ask them through the lms or moodle for this course and i'll see you in the next lecture